So, I didn't mean to start a business at 16. In fact, I didn't mean to start a business at all. But it grew to a team of eight, and it was in Vancouver, Toronto, and New York. If I had not built the business, I wouldn't have known it was possible. You don't know what you don't know. Now, all day, you're going to be hearing people speak and share their stories and their experiences. But what is Redefine? And what is the norm? Is it a 180 change? Is it a slight change? Is it working with everyday people? I'll share my story with you. A secret. I live religiously by four things opportunity, relationships, persistence, and positivity. Opportunity. Why not take the opportunity if you don't know where it's going to lead you? I, and, and you know, you never know what you're going to learn from the opportunity, so why not? I started when I was 12. I started volunteering for a daycare every day after school, and um, day camp every summer. Actually, my daycare and my day camp. But um, volunteering was addictive. And I started to volunteer locally in the social scene, in networking events. And it led to me meeting a distributor for a clothing brand. Now, the clothing brand is Ed Hardy. Now, don't laugh. It was only in the States at the time, but they wanted someone to throw lunch parties across Canada and find, basically, get exposure. So I thought, why not? It's a paid gig, my first contract. In fact, it was my first client. So I took the contract. I didn't know what the Ed Hardy opportunity would bring me, but it led to me starting a business. Relationships. It's probably what you're going to build your business around, and your career, and find your next job through your friend or through someone you know. And when I was 16, I started volunteering for youth organizations and youth conferences, and met a social policy planner who believed in me and hired me on part-time to plan this youth conference. So twice a year, I planned this youth conference, and part-time led to full-time, and full-time led to an internal opportunity with the 2010 Winter Olympics. I didn't know where the relationship would lead me, but it led to me being you know, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, being the editor for the 2010 Winter Olympics. Persistence. Persistence, persistence, persistence. Know what you want and go after it. Let me share my story with you. When I was 16, and like every other girl, I wanted to be a fashion editor. <laughs> a magazine fashion editor. So much that I wanted to, well, I didn't want to. I actually called Vogue and GQ every single day. <laughs> every single day from my high school long distance phone. And I'm pretty sure the long distance phone was meant for post secondary schools, but that's okay. Whatever. Uh, I saved money. Um, I called them for six months. And I got hung up on. I was told I was too young. It wasn't part of the program. I didn't reach anyone. So I told a friend. And this friend suggested that I call their boss. I thought, why not? That's such a creative idea. So I started calling Kanye Nast every day for two and a half months. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm calling them every day. Um, know what you want and go after it, right? Uh, so I called them every day for two and a half months and finally reached someone who connected me with Glamour's editor in New York. 
And I was able to convince them to take me on as a job shadowing opportunity during the spring break of my grade 10 year. So I booked a flight, my first flight out of Vancouver to New York and made my way there. I finally found the Connie Nast building and nervously I went up the building. And not only was it not a job shadowing opportunity, it was a 10 minute conversation outside in the lobby. I didn't even get to see the office. Um, wow, it was, I mean, was the trip, was it, was it a waste? No, I eventually met Canadian people in the fashion industry and kept in contact with them. Uh, went to New York Fashion Week every season and I met a fashion, des well, a fashion editor, Elle Magazine. I didn't know where calling Vogue and GQ for six months would lead me. I didn't know where calling Connie Nats for two and a half months every single day would lead me. Um, but I persisted and I knew what I was going for. So I went for it. Now, once you have the opportunity and you've built the relationship, and you're persistent, you need positivity. You need to believe in yourself when others don't believe in you. Did I know how to start a business? <laughs> Did I know how to run a business? No, I just took the opportunities as they came. And I believed in myself. Enough to drop out of school and pursue my business. I didn't know where it was going to lead me, but I embraced the unknown. Now, look around you. I heard you met the people on your left and your right, but look in front of you and look behind you. Have you met these people before? And why haven't you? Why haven't you introduced yourself? Don't just know their first and last name, but I challenge you to meet 10, if not 20 people today, besides speakers. <laughs> and get to know, and set aside a date, a time, and get to know their interests, their passion, and their goals. Because you, your paths may not you know, collide tomorrow or the day after, but maybe in a couple years, or in five years, you don't know. I'm 26 now, and as some of you know, I recently went through a pretty life-changing event. Um, I don't know what's in store for me, and I don't know what's in store for you. I've shared my story, and hopefully you have the courage to do, redefine the norm. Just remember, be open to opportunities. Build relationships, be persistent, <laughs> and believe in yourself. Be positive. You don't know what you don't know. Embrace the unknown. <laughs>